Welcome to this latest edition by Union Solidarity International. It's an absolute honour and privilege to be joined by what I would describe as one of the best, if not the best, documentary filmmaker in Europe and indeed the world at the moment, who has done previous documentaries, Deptocracy, Catastroika, but today we're going to be talking about his latest documentary, Fascism Inc. Aris, it's an absolute pleasure to have you with us today, my friend. Thank you for having me. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about your latest documentary? What motivated you to film it? And indeed, the European implications of it, because I know that's something that you've been very keen to stress, that this isn't a situation, the rise of fascism, that is only threatening Greece, but indeed Europe. You know, we say right now that uh, whatever happens in Greece never stays in Greece and uh, unfortunately we realized that with our two previous uh, documentaries, Deptocracy and Catastroika. In Deptocracy we were trying to explain the characteristics of the debt crisis that were common in all uh, countries of the European periphery, starting from uh, Ireland and going to Portugal, uh, Spain and uh, uh, probably also Italy. Uh, and we were trying to explain that uh, this is a problem of the financial system itself and not only uh, what happened in Greece uh, as a lazy nation as we were presented by the mainstream media in Europe and United States. Uh, unfortunately we were right and unfortunately we were right also in our second documentary Catastroika where we, we were trying to, to describe the consequences of a debt crisis to the democratic institutions of, of our country. We characterize it as a coup d'etat, uh, a financial coup d'etat against uh, democracy. Now the third the, the documentary, Fascism Inc., is in a way uh, a sequel of the other two documentaries. Uh, we are trying to explain that fascism is not something like a natural phenomenon that uh, comes to a country unexpected. It's something that happens historically during uh, the debt crisis. We have seen the same thing in uh, the 20s or the 30s. And it's not uh, an anti-systemic movement as the neo-Nazis are trying to explain. It's something that always had the support of political and economic elites. So we are following the footsteps of Mussolini and Hitler. We've traveled to, to Italy, now we're going to Germany in a few days to describe this, this support that both dictators uh, had from political and economic elites and the way that they used their power against massive movements, against strikers, against uh, workers who were trying to, to survive during this uh, recession uh, period. The same thing applies right now in Greece. Even though Golden Dome, the neo-Nazi party, presents itself as an uh, anti-austerity party, anti-systemic, anti-capitalist uh, party in, in a way. What they're doing is to support uh, big industrialists, to support uh, ship owners, uh, to fight against uh, left-wing parties and uh, unionists in all parts of uh, Greece. So we want to bring forward some examples from the history of Europe and to explain that this party, these neo-Nazis, are practically an instrument uh, for the implementation of this uh, austerity policy in Greece and I'm afraid it will follow in other countries too. Aris, thanks for that very concise and comprehensive synopsis of your latest documentary and none of us who are watching this on USI's YouTube channel can fail to not miss the echoes of the past of the 1920s and the 1930s. In many respects, it is history repeating itself, maybe in a different guise it's repeating itself, but certainly a lot of the things that you're describing at the moment could be lifted out of the chapters of the 1930s. 
could you just give a little bit more detail without, of course, giving too much away from the documentary about some of the examples that are actually happening in Europe at the moment? Of course, USI is taking a very keen interest in the, the political and economic elites in many respects, facilitating the environment in which Golden Dawn has come to such prominence. Could you just give us some, some examples of some of the political and economic elites allowing the neo-Nazis to thrive in many respects? Again, we should go back to the 20s and 30s, and one uh, major example is what happened with uh, Mussolini. You know, what the fascists want us to believe is, is that Mussolini gathered all, all the black shirts and managed to march to their home and with uh, force, by force, to conquer the, the political elites and impose his power. What really happened, and we went to Italy to film this, uh, this history and to talk with uh, historians and academics there, is that he, Mussolini himself, just uh, took the, the first train from Milan to Rome. He was wearing, of course, uh, a black shirt. Without any massive movement, he went to Rome and the king just gave him the keys of power. And the present that Mussolini had to give to the, these political elites was that the following days he attacked uh, people who were on strike in uh, some big factories in Milan and Rome, in Alfa Romeo, in Fiat, in, in other big factories. The same thing happened in, uh, in Germany. Uh, the fascist and uh, Nazi movements were used as an instrument, as I was uh, saying, uh, against uh, working class people. And the same thing we can see uh, right here in, uh, in Greece with Golden Dome. Don't forget that before the murder of Pavlos Fisas, uh, who was uh, a hip-hop artist, uh, Golden Dome members were not only attacking immigrants, but they were attacking uh, union members and uh, members of uh, left-wing parties uh, around Greece. So, now the government uh, supposedly was trying to, to control this neo-Nazi movement, but practically what they were doing is to impose to the Greek society what they characterize as the theory of the two extremes. They want to persuade us that the one extreme are the neo-Nazis and the, the other extreme is our moderate parties of the left. So what they're saying is that we will attack both parties. In a way, it reminds me, you know, what happened in Turkey in the 80s with the dictatorship. They were supposedly attacking both extremes, as they characterize it, but practically what they did was to rearrange, to resuffle, if you want, uh, the far-right uh, movements in, in Turkey, while at the same time they destroyed almost totally the unions and uh, left-wing parties in, in the country. I'm afraid the same thing happens here and we have to persuade uh, all the people, we have to, to bring uh, all these examples from, uh, from the 20th century so that people will understand with what they're dealing with. Aris, thank you very much for that response and taking from your comments there, I think you are describing a situation whereby the state and apparatus of the state as it is today is manufacturing and engineering a situation and environment which allows them to juxtapose what they would describe as a far left and a far right in order to maintain their grip on power and I know you've been very keen to join the dots across Europe and that this isn't just a Greek phenomena. Indeed, that Greece might be the epicentre of this storm, but there is many situations developing across Europe that mirror what's going on in Greece. And I know that when we look forward to the European elections, which are impending, how far right, xenophobic and indeed neo-Nazi parties are gaining a lot of support around Europe. Do you want to just 
Aris, if you don't mind, just give our international viewers a flavour of the situation today in Greece. Of course, we have seen how the Golden Dawn leaders have been rounded up in pending trials under the, the charges of heading a criminal organisation. What is the feeling in Greece today, particularly from those in the progressive movement and on the left? How do they view this situation? Do they think that the Greek state is deliberately choosing its moment now to round up Golden Dawn leaders? And if so, for what reason? There are different theories uh, trying to explain why the Greek government attacked uh, Golden Dawn and some of its uh, leaders are right now in prison waiting for trial. Uh, we should never forget the massive anti-fascist movement that was created within, I would say, less than 10 hours after the mur murder of uh, hip-hop artist Paul Fissas. Uh, they put enormous pressure to the government to, to take care of, the, of this situation. Just a week before the murder, there were some famous uh, journalists and commentators in uh, mainstream uh, corporate media saying that why we shouldn't think about a cooperation in next elections between New Democracy, the governing party, and Golden Dawn, the neo-Nazis. So they were trying to understand what the reaction of the people would be. They were ready to cooperate even within a government alliance. Uh, fortunately, this massive anti-fascist movement stopped them. But at the same time, they are trying to take advantage of the situation and at the same time using the same laws and the same uh, police forces, the same arguments to attack what they characterize as extremism of the left. And when they are talking about extremism of the left, usually they are talking about strikes, they are talking about people who try to survive during this uh, austerity period that is imposed not only by the Greek government and the Greek economic elites, but also by the IMF and the European Central Bank and the European Commission. I'm afraid that the same thing will happen in a few weeks or months in other European countries. And you know, there is another ideological battle that we should, um, in, in which we should take part. They are saying that Okay, we have austerity measures in other European countries, we have the Troika uh, intervening in, uh, in Portugal and Spain, but we haven't seen an anti-Nazi party uh, with the strength of Golden Dawn, what we've seen in, in Greece. So, they are trying to say that it's not the economy, it's not the crisis, it's not the austerity policy that creates the fertile ground for Golden Dawn. What we should answer to them is that if you take the statistics and the data from European Commission, you will see that in countries like Portugal, Spain and Ireland, the average loss of a family, the, the average loss in the income of a family is from 7 to 9-10%. In Greece, the last two or three years, we've lost 35% of our income, uh, and of our salaries and of what a family was taking as, as money in order to survive. So we have more extreme case of neo-Nazis because we have a more extreme case of austerity in Greece. And I'm afraid the same neoliberal policy uh, will create the conditions uh, for the rise of uh, other neo-fascist and neo-Nazi uh, parties all around Europe. Aris, thank you very much. I think that Everybody can see the correlations between the economic collapse, the decline in living standards and access to public services and the rise of the far right. We at USI Live are very proud to support your new documentary Fascism Inc. in any way that we can, including contacting our supporters about how they can visit your website at info ward.gr and how they can get involved in supporting the documentary by sharing it, the trailer, but also by donating to it. So we just want to thank you once again for your latest contribution to fighting neoliberal policies, austerity 
and tackling the very real issue which is prevalent not only in Greece but across Europe which is the rise of fascist parties and neo-Nazi parties. Aris, thank you very much. Comrade uh, Efkaristo. Well, uh, just one comment that uh, people can visit our website also in uh, fascism-inc.com and to, to explain to your viewers that uh, it's crowdfunded documentaries. We never accepted money from the state, uh, corporations or political parties and it's only the viewers that uh, support us to, to finish our job. And there is also uh, a call, if you like, to other documentaries all around Europe that they can take parts of the, of the documentary, especially the first part, uh, which is the theoretical and historical background, and put their own ending. So someone living in, uh, in Great Britain can uh, describe the situation right now in, in his country, someone who's living in uh, France or Spain can create his own ending for the documentary. So in that way we can create a European network of uh, anti-fascist documentaries and create an anti-fascist uh, encyclopedia, if you like, describing uh, what is happening uh, all around Europe. Alice, that's truly not only innovative but inspiring, comrade. Thank you very much for speaking with USI today and we look forward to further conversations in the future, my friend. Thank you for all the support. Thank you very much.